Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a fully 3D printed 4.7 liter ITX case. So let's get started. Now before we begin, if you want to 3D print your own ITX case, everything will be linked down in the description below. Now this is one of the bigger prints that I've ever done and I've always been interested in 3D printing an ITX case because I like smaller computers. Other than this one, most of the time I like to build ITX mini PCs and this is one of the better designs that I have seen. If you guys want to see more of this, just comment down below on what case you want to see 3D printed, where I could get the source files from because I am interested in playing around with this idea more. Now I did take the time to time lapse everything and show you guys the entire process. So I'm gonna cue the music on the time lapse and then show you the installation process. So here are all the parts laid out on my desk, all printed, and it took every fiber of my being not to put this together the day it finished printing. I actually had to wait until I was able to film it, but yes, exciting stuff. Now I'm gonna talk about the parts a little bit before I get into the building process. This way you guys have an idea of how I printed everything and how long it took. The first piece is uh, this. This is the front shroud where the power button sits and the power supply sits into it. I also like the design of how the holes are, so it's on an angle. You see, if it's like this, it's just dark, so dust doesn't actually get trapped in as much, I guess. But it's a really cool design. This actually took about 27 hours, including the time lapse. It probably would have been 25 without the time lapse. And this was also printed on the Neptune 2 on a layer height of 0 0.2 with 30% uh, infill. Everything is about 30% infill. Next, we have all these red parts that I actually printed out with my Ender 5. Now, these two front and back spleens took about seven hours each. So seven hours, seven hours. And again, layer height of uh, 0 0.2 and about 30% infill. Then I have the two uh, case panels. These took about five hours to print. And I actually, this was the first one I ever printed on the Ender 5 and it actually warped a little bit. I don't know if you guys could tell, but it warped a little bit on the top. And that's because I actually didn't have the bed level perfectly the way I wanted to. So one side actually just warped. All the other parts printed after this piece came out perfect. Like this one right over here, no warping or anything. And I gotta say, things with holes like this is probably one of the hardest things to print. I had such a huge problem with trying to get the first layer down originally to get this working, but everything worked out fine afterwards. Then I have the top. This is the top of the case and this is the bottom of the case. This took about two hours to print each one. And I also ended up printing out the middle spleen. This will actually connect the two uh, front spleen and the back spleen together. But this was actually printed in ABS. That's why it's a different shade of red. I don't know if you could tell from this camera, but yeah, this is on a different shade of red. Uh, this was also printed in ABS because this is where all the heat is gonna be going. So I decided to use ABS instead on this part. Well, everything else was printed in uh, PLA. Then we also have the PSU bracket. This only took about an hour to print, which was really quick and then the GPU mount over here. So you got a screw hole and this is where you would use to mount the GPU. So this was about, I think half an hour or so, it wasn't that long. All in all, in total, it took about 60 hours uh, to print everything together. So if you got that time to print it, by all means, it, this is a really cool print itself to actually get a full computer case working from your 3D printer. The model also has tongue and groove. So basically all these pieces has a little notch that sticks out and it will connect to the groove itself. I don't know if you could see that, but it has a tongue and groove. So when you put these together, it's not gonna uh, slide in and out. Also, one of the biggest problems that I'm gonna run into is the screws that it's gonna need. Now they all use flathead screws, which means it's like notched out. So let me show you here. And 
they're like notched inward. So you need all flathead screws. And I have to go through all my bins of screws just to see if I could find anything that I could use. Now, luckily for me, I actually have a bag of hard drive screws that are flathead screws. And I have other screws like this, so I tested it out and these work perfect. So I actually have a bag of them, which should be able to fill in all the places of the screws that I need to install. Now there are some handoffs where I might need to install one of these power adapters that will use a different type of screw. So I bought one of these power adapters to go in the back of the case, as well as um, installing this into here would use a different type of screw. And then also the PSU bracket to this spleen will also use a different type of screw, probably longer because you could see how deep this is. So. I'm gonna be digging through my box of screws and also gives me an excuse to uh, clean it out actually. So with that being said, let's begin the building process. Couple of things you have to put together yourself on this ITX case uh, is the power supply button. It's a 20 millimeter button uh, and then you just have to find some way of hooking it up to your motherboard and then also the PSU power supply. And I was able to find these little three prong connectors for the PSU. So I was able to put that together as well. Now talking about this case, this is a very, very snug fit on everything, including the power supply cable, the motherboard cables, and also the CPU pin cables. I was able to fit everything in. Uh, you definitely need a modular power supply and this is the SFX or SFF, the small form factor power supplies that's going in here. As you can see, everything fits very, very snug. And I also put a placeholder for a graphic card on the other side because this is the only 170 millimeter graphic card that I got. Uh, it's an older one, I'm not gonna be using it. It's just to show you that that's how it would fit as far as a graphic card goes. Uh, I did try to order a 1660, you know, the, uh, the 170 millimeter one. Couldn't find any. There's also a remix on Thingiverse, which I'll leave linked down in the description below for 210 millimeter graphic cards. So it extends this base a little bit so you could fit bigger size, the ones with two fans, graphic cards on this guy. He's also made a modification to the actual case where you could fit an SSD in the front as well. So I'll leave that link down in the description below. Putting this together was uh, a little bit challenging because you really had to tap every screw first. Don't just put everything in. I would just screw everything first, then try to put everything in together. Uh, the power supply cable and everything else, this is a very, very snug fit in the front, but it is it does have enough airflow to run everything. Now this motherboard itself is pretty cool because it's got LEDs built in, so it's got a really cool red glow, but you could also change it to whatever color you want. It definitely has enough airflow. Now the only thing that I didn't show, which I don't have, is little feet. You need little feet to lift it up at least five to 10 millimeters, so the bottom could also get some airflow as well. But that's the only thing I'm missing from this entire build. They'll actually lift it up a little bit. But otherwise, it's all complete and everything works. Um, I actually have to run this for probably a good maybe two to three weeks consistently just to see if it's going to have any issues with the PLA and the ABS in the middle. But um, I ran it for a good five minutes. It stayed relatively cool and I didn't have any issues, but I wasn't playing any games or anything with it yet until I get a graphic card that I can actually pop into the back and use the graphic card simultaneously with the computer. I won't be able to fully test it. 
Otherwise, this build was a lot of fun. I'm telling you, it was so hard not to build it when it first came out of the printer. That's it for me, guys. If you guys like this computer or have any questions about this particular case, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.